The special representative of the UN Secretary General in Libya, Martin Kobler, has told the UN Security Council that a Libyan-led effort to find durable peace must be supported. Mr. Kobler says without progress in politics, the symptoms of conflict will only worsen. He adds that migrants continue to die as they seek a better life, while women and men in detention facilities live in a nightmare. The life situation remains of deep concern. Since March, 65 civilians were killed during armed conflict, some by indiscriminate bombing. We cannot be numb to the suffering this conflict is causing. We cannot compromise the basic principles that unite us, that make us human. Nor can we afford to abandon our hopes and our desire for a better, more united Libya. Ethiopia's Prime Minister Khalil Mariam Destelin has met with the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu during a three-day visit to uh, the region. The two leaders pledged to enhance uh, cooperation uh, in various fields, including water, agriculture and security. Uh, he is on his first official visit to Israel and also laid a wreath at Yad Vashem Holocaust the Memorial Museum in Jerusalem, earlier in the day. We view Africa uh, as a continent on the rise. We understand that there are challenges. We have them too. But we, are, we sense that there is an opportunity to seize the future. Uh, since your, since uh, my visit to Ethiopia, uh, we've increased our economic cooperation. And I look forward to deepening that today, uh, particularly in water. This is an area that uh, Prime Minister de Salen knows particularly well. Uh, he is uh, a great uh, engineer of water, and he understands the full potential of what can be done with it uh, in agriculture as well, in health, in security, in all these areas and many others. Part of Ethiopia is um, arid. We know that Israel has um, converted desert into oasis. Uh, this is because of the Israeli technology. And we want to uh, transfer this technology to my country so that modernizing agriculture is a very important issue, as you mentioned, and we will cooperate very, uh, very closely. In South Africa, officials say up to 10,000 people have been evacuated from a scenic coastal town that has been devastated by wildfires. Reports say military equipment have been deployed to douse more than 25 fires in uh, Ninsna. Uh, at least uh, eight people were killed in the storms and fires that have been raging in the town and other areas of the Western Cape region. Strong winds from the worst winter storm in 30 years fueled the fires. In southern Africa, a magistrate court has ruled that Zambia's opposition leader Hakainde Michelema will go on trial at a high court on treason charges. The leader of the United Party for National Development was arrested in April when police raided his home and charged him with trying to overthrow the government. An economist and businessman known as H.H. Mr. Hichilema was defeated last August by President Edgar Lungu in an election he said was fraudulent. His attempts to mount a legal challenge have so far been unsuccessful. His lawyers previously said that the case should not proceed to a high court because the officer who issued the trial papers had no authority to do so. Finally on the program, a South African karate trainer, uh, Monwabisi Njomba, has opened a fitness academy in South Africa's uh, Kayelitsia Township for children and youth. He says he wants to open up the sport to underprivileged communities and build up a talent base that can represent South Africa as international tournaments. Kayelitsha Town, the largest black settlement in South Africa's coastal city, Cape Town, has a notorious reputation for rampant crime and gang violence. But against a chaotic background, children and youth at Njumba Fitness Academy are learning to fight for a better future. Here, the students are taught to use powerful blows and kicks to promote good. The gym offers rigorous karate training 
with an aim to teach discipline, fitness and self-defense skills. Momobisi Njomba is the man behind the program. He too learned karate as a boy under a master in his hometown and honed his skills further by watching kung fu movies. Unjumba says he wants to give children alternatives. I, I see there's a lot of soccer and cricket and all that stuff, but I choose to, to take karate because I started karate in early age. Yeah, and then I see to me the karate is the best sport and discipline. So to influence them, it's easy because I know karate is it's, it's the, the sport of discipline. Shambo, shambo, shambo. When Jumbo started his martial arts gym in 2012, his client base has grown to include adults too, who frequent the gym for morning karate lessons and aerobics in the afternoon. The club also holds regular fitness challenge sessions around Kailicha. The young students are between 5 and 18 years old, and those who can afford to pay a monthly fee of $12. It changed my life because I'm no longer like sitting in the corners and sitting with friends in the streets, you know. And it keeps me busy most of the time. It has taught me how to do things the right way. And I often think of when maybe you get into a fight, you think twice before doing something. When Jumbo says that finding sponsors and educate gear for his students has been difficult. He also works as a personal trainer to boost his income and raise capital for the academy. Some of the karate students have qualified for the International Karatedo Gujukai Association World Championship, which will be held in Canada in September. When Jumbo says that he wants to open similar centers across the country. And a nice way of taking the kids off the streets, though. Well, that's Network Africa. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Jacka Rogers.